Hey guys, this is John from the Reaper blog. This video is going to be an adaptation of a segment I did for the home recording show. I'm mixing an acoustic song using only Reaper stock plugins. I wasn't able to use some of my favorite plugins, so it was a bit of a challenge to get a good mix, but it was an interesting experiment and I thought it would be good to share it with the blog. I didn't record any video for the original segment, so I've added in screenshots of all the plugin settings that I used. The song you're hearing is No Worries by Free the Bunch. I mixed the song back in April of this year. It's an acoustic, folk, pop sort of song, and pretty average home recording quality. The original mix was done fairly quickly. I did three songs for them in a weekend, I think. And I think it turned out pretty well. And actually, the mixing autopsy this week is not going to be dissecting this mix. I'm going to do a new mix with only Reaper plugins. So no third-party plugins. Can't use any of my favorite plugins. I'm not going to try to beat this mix. I'm not going to try to copy this mix. I'm just trying to get a good mix using only stock plugins. Okay, so starting with the original mix, taking out all the inserts and all the routing. Here's how the raw tracks sound. I had a dream that I could be someone else rather than who I am right now. So the raw tracks provided with this mix. There's a lead vocal, there are two backing vocals, two tracks for piano, two mics on the one piano, uh, submixed, so it comes up as one track. There's a rhythm guitar, additional rhythm guitar, and a lead guitar playing the melody. Those are routed into a bus through the folder function in Reaper. There's a track labeled Rhythm Box, which is a cajon. It's a rectangular wooden box with a sound hole. It can be tapped on, thumped with uh, palm of your hand, and uh, there's also snare wires, so you get a kick and a snare sort of sound. There's a live tambourine track. There's also a shaker loop. There's also a couple clap samples. The shaker loop and the clap samples were things that I added to fill out the mix. Okay, so let's start off with the guitars. There's a mic and a DI on each one. Uh, the original mix, I used the DIs a little bit, just to add a little bit more clarity. This time, because I really don't like the sound of those DI guitars, I just got rid of them, using just the microphone on each guitar. So the main rhythm guitar, without any effects. I kept it fairly simple, a bit of compression just to uh, even up the dynamics, basically just chopping off the peaks a little bit. Fairly slow attack, 55 milliseconds. And then some EQ. This is a sort of buzzy sounding acoustic, but at the same time I needed it brighter. So I have a couple notches, one around 3K, another around 10K, but then I have a high shelf pulling up and then a bit more soft shaping around the lower mids. So here's how that sounds with some EQ and compression. And then that brings me to the first challenge of this mix, the reverbs. I always put reverbs on acoustic guitars, uh, at least one, and that's just to give some distance to that microphone. Unfortunately, the reverb that comes with Reaper is not particularly good at all. I kind of hate it. <laughs> it's an algorithmic reverb, not a lot of options. It just doesn't sound that great to me. So on these acoustic guitars, there is two reverbs. I made a short one and a sort of medium one. Both of these have had some additional EQ, cutting off the lows, boosting the lower mids, maybe boosting the highs. On one of them, I've cut a lot of the lows, and I've cut a lot of the highs. So one of them I wanted sort of to be like early reflections with a bit of pre-delay. The second one I wanted to be sort of longer, actually a shorter pre-delay, uh, but I wanted that one darker. Here's the main rhythm guitar with some reverb. <laughs>
that's much better, but it's not a great sounding reverb. It just doesn't sound like it's a quality reverb. The second rhythm guitar has very similar processing and about the same blend of reverb. The melody guitar, the raw track sounds like this. Okay, so a bit of EQ and a bit of compression. The compression here is a little more aggressive just to uh, tame the peaks and to bring up the sustain. The EQ on this is a low shelf, but 4 dB at 600 hertz, then about a 2 dB boost at 9.3K. So I just tried to get a bit of a snappier attack by setting the attack of the compressor a little bit slower, only 15 milliseconds. I'm not killing the transient, but I'm kind of making it sharper by letting just a little bit through. So this is going into the two reverbs again. It's also going into a delay. The delay is then feeding into the long reverb. So a bit more complicated. This delay is set pretty short. It's a stereo delay. I didn't make it super wide but it just adds a bit of a, a slap that's different on the left and right. So I thought that fit a lot better, gave it its own space. Okay, moving on from the guitars, let's do the rhythm section. Starting with the uh, cajon without any effects on it. Kind of dull for processing. I used a plugin called Huge Booty, which is a bass enhancer, sort of like what the Waves R bass does. It's basically generating an 80 hertz sub frequency whenever the low notes are hit. Then it's going into a compressor. Quite a bit of EQ to shape the low end but also shape the high ends to, you know, get that kick sound and get that snare sound. Here it is after processing. That is then going into the same two reverbs that the guitars are going into. And there you can really hear the problems with those reverbs. Moving on to the tambourine, pretty straightforward, without any processing, sounds like this. For processing, I use the transient controller, increase the attack and increase the sustain just a little bit. EQ just to roll off the lows very gently, about a 3 dB per octave, starting at 500 hertz, but this curve extends all the way up to about 3K, and just a gentle boost at 6.5K. After that, some compression, very fast attack, so completely killing that transient, releasing very fast. Then it's going into a delay, and this is uh, creating a stereo widener effect of uh, 14 milliseconds. That is then going into the two reverbs. So I've created a longer tail on that tambourine, which I think really helps. Uh, the reverbs don't sound so bad with that, and the dynamics are much more consistent. So then the shaker. Here's the plain shaker. Sort of sounds small, sort of uh, boxy, I guess. I'm using the transient controller again, increasing the attack, reducing the sustain by the same amount. Some EQ, kill the lows, boost around 500 hertz, a cut around 2 kilohertz, and a broad boost at 5K. Going into the short and long reverbs. Finally, the claps. These are just a couple samples that have been sequenced um, to kind of just accent parts of the song. That sounds a bit choppy, but when blended in with the other rhythm tracks, it just adds a nice accent. 
all I've used is the transient controller, increasing the attack, decreasing the sustain, uh, exactly the same settings as on the shaker. No compression or EQ on this track, and it's just going into the reverb. Here's a section of the song where all of the parts are kind of playing at the same time. Those reverbs in this context kind of work because it's sort of this trashy sort of garage sound. And they give the instrument space. That's all I'm hoping to get with them. Okay, moving on to the piano. Instead of panning these hard left and right, I actually have the left hand side pan to the center and then the right hand side about 80% to the right. Those two tracks are being submixed into one track and that's panned about a third to the right. I panned it that way so that it will blend with the additional rhythm guitar. So for processing on the piano compressor, a bit more attack through the transient controller. Of course, those are going into the short and the long reverb. Okay, so that brings us to the vocals. I had a dream that I could be someone else rather than who I am right now. So you can hear some bleed. You can hear that this is probably not the best microphone for this voice. Sort of seems like there's a resonance in the upper mids. The first thing I did was use the gate to help uh, get rid of the breaths and also any of the bleed. Then I used Retune, the Reaper automatic pitch correction plugin. It's set to 250 milliseconds, which is pretty slow. So it's sort of only going to help with the sustained notes. It's really not the best pitch correction plugin out there. So after the tuner, I've used a EQ in an attempt to kill those resonances, make the, the voice a little more full in the lower areas, and an overall brightness. That's then going into two compressors, one set just to limit the peaks, and one set to kind of give an overall squishiness to this Threshold set very low, very fast attack, uh, slow release, a very low ratio, only 1.1. And it's compressing about 6 or 7 dB all the time. That's just going to give a more consistent overall level. I was still hearing some problems in the mid-range after that. I did another cut, uh, just about 2 kilohertz. Okay, so the vocals with processing, uh, no reverb yet. I had a dream that I could be someone else rather than who i am right now okay then it's going into the short reverb and the long reverb i had a dream that i could be someone else rather than who i am right now that was pretty good but not quite what i was looking for so then i used a plugin called floaty delay it's tempo synced to just below a 16th note. It's a pretty simple delay, but it has the option of modulation and it also has a resonant filter. So it's kind of interesting. And there's a slight difference on the left and right. So here it is going into that. I had a dream that I could be someone else rather than who I am right now. And that delay track is also EQ'd, taking out some low mids and some high mids, leaving the mid-range center mids alone. Okay, the backing vocal tracks. Pretty simple, just um, compressor. Panned about half left and right. They're going into the reverbs. Money don't grow on trees. So, pretty simple. All the vocals together. Cause money don't grow on trees And I don't see opportunities to get out of depression Again today On the master, I'm using the Re-X Comp, which is the multiband compressor. 
and I'm just taking off maybe 1 or 2 dB in 3 bands. There's a small amount of automation on the piano track, just to bring it down when the other instruments come in at the end of the bridge. Other than that, any volume changes I do with item gain. So now I'll play the full mix from the bridge into the last chorus. In the end, I think it got a pretty good mix. There are definitely some challenging things about mixing without all your favorite plugins, without all the options. At the end of the day, I think you can do a very good job with just the stock plugins from Reaper or from Cubase or Pro Tools or Logic. I don't think that really matters. You have pretty much everything you need. So the things that were really lacking for me, reverbs, I would have loved to have a couple, like just one lush reverb would have been really nice. And I think overall the mix is sort of lacking a, a depth, again, partly the reverb, but also I'm not using any of the usual tape saturation or console emulation plugins that I use on every track. There's no saturation on any of the tracks. So that's something that's a challenge for me because those are plugins that I use all the time. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it sounds pretty good. And um, maybe it's just encouraging for you guys. You know, don't worry so much about having a million options for compressors and things like that. Using one compressor on each track, I was fine. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Find more tutorials on this channel and at reaperblog.net. Thanks.